When an ambulance goes blaring by, you know someone's life may hang in the balance. And as medical technology develops, ambulances become more and more sophisticated. TechBox got an inside view of the city's updated ambulances. The city and county of Honolulu has 19 ambulances for Oahu, and paramedics are busy. We actually received over 80,000 calls to our EMS um, 911 dispatch center. Out of those 80,000 times that we received calls, we dispatched an ambulance about 76,000 times. Uh, out of the 76,000 times, we actually transported over 50,000 patients to hospitals last year. Earlier this year, the city bought seven new ambulances to replace the older models, some of which had 180,000 miles on them. They average between four and 5,000 miles per month. The new model is a Ford F-350. It's got a turbo uh, diesel engine, obviously it, it needs that much power to, to pull the weight of the ambulance. Tough and rugged outside, a powerful engine under the hood, but it's what's inside the ambulance that features an efficient use of modern medical technology. The new LifePak 12 is a very helpful medical device. This main job is to monitor the patient's electrical activity of his heart. Through this device we can tell a multitude of things. If there is a potential damage to the heart from something called a myocardial infarction or something called um, acute coronary syndrome. Paramedic Don Takara explains the LifePak 12 is more than just a monitor. The electrocardiogram pads are attached to the chest and stomach via a gel, then the monitor is turned on. But what happens with this, we have a total of 12 different views of the heart. It's kind of looking at an apple. One side of the apple looks like it be perfectly fine, but you turn the apple around, you may see there's a hole, a bruise. That's what we're doing with the heart. Once the damage is documented on the EKG, the paramedics can transmit it to the hospital, which begins preparing for the arrival of the patient. Now what the hospital will do, as they alert the necessary personnel, they can do several different types of um, um, things for the patient. Chemically, they can use what's called a clot buster to break up clots, or they can go to the cardiac cath lab where they can do actual bypass graft surgery or something called angioplasty. Takara says the faster the paramedics can stabilize the patient, the better chance for survival. Because time is muscle. The longer we wait, the more damage to the person's heart, the higher the chances of basically death with the patient. And we want to reduce that as much as we can. So let's say we have somebody with asthma. We may put this on this, and we'll look at these numbers. We want them in the high 90s, ideal, okay? If it's slower, that may indicate what modality of treatment we need to use, more oxygen or using other chemicals. The pneumatic blood pressure cuff allows paramedics to monitor someone's blood pressure without having to manually touch buttons or see the monitor. So let's say I'm in back here and I have a critical patient. I don't have to keep pressing buttons. Right. This is automatically set to go for every so many minutes. The more critical a patient, the shorter the intervals I will have on that. Right. And I can also make sure that this device also audibly tells me what's happening with the patient. So I can hear a person's heartbeat as I'm doing things. Takara says there have been many times when they've stabilized a patient on the way to the hospital and by the time they reach the emergency room, the patient is sitting up and responding well. He credits the technology, the experience of the staff, and the speed at which the problem has been called in. Hawaii has a propensity to rather ask relatives for help first, so to call, what should I do? Well, let me call uncle, let me call auntie and such. So we get there late. Now if they call us early, we can use a lot of these interventions and basically we can make a lot of changes. Remember, no one wants to have to call an ambulance, but if you do, you'll be getting the best of care before you even get to the hospital.